Hello everyone and welcome. My name is James and I'm a software engineer on the PyTorch team working on Torch.fx. Today, I'm going to be introducing Torch.fx, a new program transformation system we have developed for PyTorch programs. So a little bit about the agenda today. First, we're going to cover some background. What are program transformations and why do we need them? Second, I'm going to cover the motivation of Torch.fx. Third, I'll give an overview of Torch.fx and show you how you can use it in your PyTorch workflows. Finally, I'm going to present a case study of the different use cases folks in the PyTorch ecosystem have found for Torch.fx. So first, let's start with some background. Why do we need program transformations? PyTorch's Python-based API is great for code authoring. It allows you to use the flexible and friendly Python language and allows you to access the entirety of the Python library ecosystem. On the other hand, sometimes we want to use PyTorch code in a different way from how it was authored in Python. Examples of this include model quantization, applying optimizations to the code to make it run faster, or moving the code to a specialized accelerator. These transformations often need to see the code in a form other than the Python code. Historically, deep learning frameworks and compilers have consumed graph representations of programs for such transforms. In summary, we would like to have a system that can allow modifications to PyTorch programs after they have already been authored. So how can you do such transformations in PyTorch today? One option is to swap modules in the NN module hierarchy built into PyTorch. This works in many cases, but sometimes the module boundaries do not line up with the places that you want to transform. In addition, you cannot transform code within the forward method with this technique. This includes calls to PyTorch operators, which are functions rather than modules. A second technique is to use TorchScript. TorchScript can be used to capture a graph representation of the program, including the operators, and this graph representation can be modified to implement transformations. On the other hand, TorchScript is optimized for serialization and deployment, so the way it represents programs is very complicated. Its representation supports many Python features and is optimized for use by experienced compiler engineers, so it is often difficult to use for many developers. So there are existing techniques that you can use to modify uh, programs in PyTorch, but we've built Torch.fx to make this process even easier. Let's dive into that. With Torch.fx, we want to provide a system that enables capture and transformation of PyTorch programs after they have been written. We strive to follow a few principles in the design of Torch.fx. First, it should be Python native. It should consume and produce Python programs, and its APIs should be written in Python. Second, it should be simple to use. It should provide a simplified program representation and simple APIs for the end user. Finally, it should be lightweight. The user should be able to use Torch.fx with their existing PyTorch installation. The user shouldn't have to learn or compile C++ to use the system. So let's cover what Torch.fx actually is and how to use it. Torch.fx has three main components. First, it has a symbolic tracing mechanism to capture the program. Second, it has an intermediate representation, or IR, that is a data structure that represents the code of the captured program. Finally, it has Python code generation to return this IR back to the Python ecosystem. This is the typical pipeline used in Torch.fx, but each of these components can be used separately as well. Torch.fx uses a technique called symbolic tracing to capture the program. It feeds fake values through the program and records the operations that happen on those fake values. You can see in the code example to the right that the fx.symbolictrace API exposes this functionality. Just pass in a function or module to this API, and fx will capture it using symbolic tracing. Note that symbolic tracing only supports DAG programs, that is, dynamic control flows such as loops or if statements that depend on dynamic values are not supported. Neural networks are most often DAG programs, so we find this is a reasonable trade-off as it simplifies the graph representation for transformation purposes. Nevertheless, symbolic tracing is configurable via the tracer class. A custom tracer can be used to specify the level of representation of the capture or leave untraceable parts of the program as opaque calls and allow the program to be captured. Once a program is captured by Torch.fx, it represents the captured operations in a directed graph or DAG representation. 
This representation records the functions, modules, and methods called, and the data dependencies between them. Nodes in the DAG are the operations, and the edges are the values. This DAG representation has convenient APIs to add, remove, reorder, or replace operations, allowing you to transform the code as you please. You will see on the right a string representation of this graph structure, containing the ReLU and NEG operations that were observed during tracing of this function. Finally, torch.fx provides Python code generation from this IR. You will see on the right the code that is generated from the IR we saw previously, similarly containing the ReLU and NEG operations. Since torch.fx emphasizes interoperability with Python, transformed programs are returned to Python through this mechanism. Transform code is wrapped in an NN module subclass called graph module, and the generated code can be called just like any other NN module instance or passed to other systems such as TorchScript. Now let's take a look at a few of the use cases folks have found for torch.fx. First, torch.fx is being used in the prototype FX graph mode quantization tool. Torch.fx provides the ability to programmatically modify the operations and the parameters of a model, so it is a good fit for quantization which modifies both. Second, torch.fx is being used for optimizations such as fusion and operation scheduling. FX can be used to, for example, fuse convolution and batch norm operations together or schedule asynchronous versus synchronous or local versus remote operations for maximum parallelism. Third, torch.fx has been used for various analyses. These include analyses like shape propagation or inference or model simulation to determine the performance characteristics of a model without using actual hardware. Finally, torch.fx is being used for device lowering to optimize model execution on various hardware devices and in optimizing compiler backends. What will the next use case on this list be? Will it be yours? Please check out our documentation at the link to the right and try out torch.fx for your program transformation needs. And please feel free to ask questions on the discussion forums or report issues on the GitHub issue tracker. Thank you.